So the free agent market has definitely slowed down. The only guy really of note that's left on the market is Yasiel Puig. And I have seriously no idea where he's going to sign, when he's going to sign, for how long, how much. That remains a mystery. But for the most part, everybody who's a significant player or who's going to have some impact in the 2020 season has already signed to a major league team. And there are some really under the radar signings that I maybe didn't make a video about that I want to go into and talk about today. So as you can tell from the title of today's video, I'm going to be talking about the 10 most underrated free agent signings from the 2020 offseason in Major League Baseball. As always, if you guys do enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like on it. That's the best way to show your support. Subscribe if you're new and you enjoy the content. If you love baseball, click that sub button, join the team. Remember to get in the comments section down below. Tell me who your most underrated free agent signing is of this offseason. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at GiraffeNeckMark. Links in the description. And of course, you guys know the drill. If you want to buy any tickets to any sporting events, make sure to head on over to SeatGeek. Use the code Giraffe. Save yourself $20 off your first purchase. So for the first player today's video, I'm going to talk about left-handed starting pitcher Alex Wood, who signed a one-year $4 million contract with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Since joining the Dodgers in 2016, Alex Wood has been an above average pitcher in the league. The biggest issue for him has always been staying healthy, but in 17 and 18, he put together back-to-back -back seasons of 150 innings or more. Last year in 2019, again, battled injury, only threw 35 innings with the Reds and didn't have great success, but coming off an injury in a hitter's ballpark, you can see why he struggled. But if he can channel back what he did with the Dodgers for that three, four-year span, where he had an ERA of 3.46, a whip at 1.17, striking out a career high amount of batters, giving up less walks, giving up less hits, Alex Wood can be really effective for Los Angeles and be a really nice left-handed arm to add to that rotation. I really like the signing of Alex Wood and at only $4 million this year, extremely cheap for a guy who can be really effective. Next up, I've got the only catcher feature in today's video, and that's going to be Jason Castro, who signed with the Los Angeles Angels, a one-year $6.85 million contract. Jason Castro only played in 79 games last year, but he was really effective for what the Twins needed. He swung a pretty decent bat, and behind the plate, he's very solid defensively. Swinging the bat in 79 games, he hit 13 homers, 9 doubles, give 30 RBIs on the season, 232 batting average, which is low, but he had a 332 on base, which is excellent considering his batting average, a 435 slugging to give him an OPS at 767, and an OPS plus above 100. Combine that with his solid defensive skills, Jason Castro is going to be a huge asset to the Angels, who have had some trouble having strong catchers in the past. The Angels pitching staff right now isn't too strong, and I think Castro is going to help them get the most that they possibly can out of their players. Really like this signing by the Angels. Another Los Angeles Dodgers signing this offseason that I really liked was signing Blake Trining from the Oakland A's on a one-year $10 million contract, and boy, do I love this deal so much. 2018, we know how good Blake Trinan was. An ERA below one, a whip at .834. He struck out 100 batters in 80 and one-third innings, giving up only two home runs, walking only 21 batters, and allowing only seven earned runs that season. He finished sixth in the Cy Young voting, 15th in the MVP, a career year. But 2019 was a different story. Battled some injuries throughout the year, only threw 58 and two-thirds innings, the strikeouts were down, the home runs were way up, the runs were up. I like this move, though, because you're gonna be getting Blake Trinan finally healthy, and as he has shown in the past, when he is healthy, he can be a disgustingly effective pitcher. The Dodgers need bullpen help at only $10 million for one year. Well worth the risk that you could possibly be getting one of the nastiest relievers in the league in Blake Trinan. Really good move by the Dodgers. The fourth player in today's video is going to be Travis Shaw, who signed a contract with the Toronto Blue Jays this offseason. One year, $4 million. And what's interesting with this contract is that Travis Shaw still has his arbitration years, and he actually doesn't hit free agency until 2022. Now, 2019 was a nightmare season. I mean, he got sent down to the minors, only played in 86 games, hit 157 with a 551 OPS. That's bad. But the previous two seasons with Milwaukee, he put up 30 plus homers every year, close to 100 RBIs, and OPS well above 800. He was a really strong left-handed power bat in that lineup. I think getting him in a new city, new environment, new team, with the Toronto Blue Jays, a lot of young talent there, you're going to see Travis Shaw possibly go back to that 30 home run a year guy. He has the power, he has the talent, it's just a matter of putting it all together because 2019, he needs to put that in the past. Forget about it, move on, bring back the Travis Shaw of 17 and 18, and he can be a really solid player for the Blue Jays. This next player signed with Travis Shaw's former team, the Milwaukee Brewers, that's going to be Avisel Garcia, who signed a two-year, $20 million contract with the Milwaukee Brewers this offseason with a team option for 2022. Another one of these budget contracts at only $10 million a year. I really like the money being spent here by Milwaukee. Really strong season last year with Tampa Bay after being kicked out of the White Sox. Yes, he finished with an OPS below 800, but 796, still very strong, and his OPS plus was 111. 20 homers, 25 doubles, 72 RBIs, stole a career-high 10 bases last season in only 489 at-bats, 282 average, 332 on base, 464 slugging and like I said that OPS just under 800 at 796. Really athletic guy, plays the outfield decently well but I think adding Avisail Garcia to that Brewers lineup is a nice way to fill some of those holes they lost this offseason because they did lose a lot offensively but getting a guy like Garcia is definitely going to help fill those holes. He's got a nice bat, a nice swing. It's all around pretty solid player. Maybe he's not underrated but I feel like not
not enough people are talking about this move. Madison Bumgarner. I love this move by the Arizona Diamondbacks, and I honestly don't think it's getting enough talk because this is possibly one of the better moves of the entire offseason. Madison Bumgarner has very similar numbers to Zach Wheeler. Now, yes, his ceiling is a little bit lower, but I also think his floor is a lot higher. You know what you're going to be getting out of Madison Bumgarner. People said he had a bad year last year, and he still had an ERA below four and a whip at 1.127. If that's a bad year, sign me up. And they got him for five more years, $85 million for the total contract. He's only 30 years old. He's left-handed. Those guys can pitch until they're 100. You may not be getting that Cy Young caliber player that you once had in Bumgarner in his early 20s, but for the Arizona Diamondbacks, who are a team who's looking to compete now and had a really strong season last year, he's going to be one of those guys who can push them over the edge. He's going to throw 200 innings. He's going to strike out 200 batters. He's going to have an ERA below four. I mean, he's never had an ERA above four in his career. I just don't feel like enough people are hyping up this Madison Bumgarner signing when it has the chance to be a huge X factor for the Diamondbacks this year, which leads me to Mad Bum's new teammate on the Diamondbacks, Cole Calhoun, another really under the radar signing that the Diamondbacks made this offseason that I really like. Two years, $16 million total for Cole Calhoun with a 2022 team option. Throw him in the outfield now with David Peralta in left, Starling Marte in center, and him in right field. There might not be a better defensive outfield in all of baseball. He covers a lot of ground, has a great arm. Oh, and by the way, he hit 33 home runs last year with the Angels. You bring him to Arizona now where the ball flies out of that ballpark. Huge outfield. I think you're going to see Cole Calhoun possibly have an even better season than he did in 2019, especially considering he has even more protection in the lineup. Like I said, last year was a career year. 33 homers, 29 doubles, 74 RBIs, 232 average, 325 on base, 467 slugging, gave him an OPS at 792. Combine that with his elite defense, the Diamondbacks got a steal in Cole Calhoun. That Arizona team scares me in 2020. Another team that made a lot of noise this offseason was the Cincinnati Reds. One of the moves of theirs that went under the radar is going to be Wade Miley. Really like this pickup by them. They signed him to a two-year $15 million contract with a 2022 team option. You kind of see a theme here. He pitched in 33 games last year for the Astros, 167 innings to a 3.98 ERA, a whip at 1.345, struck out more batters than normal in his career. The home runs were up, but again, who didn't have home runs that go up last year? The whip was a little higher than you expect, but I like that he's heading to the National League. As a fifth starter, I think he can be really effective. You don't want him to be your ace, but that rotation for the Reds is pretty solid with Castillo, Gray, and Bauer. Having Miley towards the back end, who every five days can maybe go five or six innings, give the bullpen a little more rest than if you had some random guy pitching. He's not going to win any Cy Young awards. He's not going to be an all-star, but he has shown the last couple seasons that he can be a competent pitcher and he can pitch in big ball games. He was huge for the Astros and the Brewers down the stretch of the last two years. The ninth player in today's video is going to be Will Smith of the Atlanta Braves. They signed him to a three-year $40 million contract with a team option for 2023, quite possibly my favorite move of the entire offseason or free agent signing, I should say. This happened at the beginning of the offseason, like right after the World Series ended, so you might have forgot about it, but you should not because Will Smith is one of the best left-handed relievers in all of baseball, gets overshadowed by guys like Josh Hader and Aroldis Chapman because Will Smith doesn't throw 100 miles an hour, but his numbers are up there with some of the best. The last two seasons with the San Francisco Giants, he's pitched in over 118 innings, striking out 167 batters, walking 36, giving up 13 home runs, and only allowing 35 earned runs. This gives him an ERA of 2.66, a whip at 1.006, strikeouts per nine at 12.7, home runs per nine at one, hits per nine 6.3. Will Smith is really solid. You add that strong left-handed arm to a much improved Atlanta Braves bullpen from last season, that's a huge pickup for them. You now have a dominant left-handed arm in that bullpen, and as long as he stays healthy, he's going to be a shutdown guy. Which leads me to my last player of today's video, and that's going to be Eric Thames, who signed with the Washington Nationals. A one-year, $4 million deal with a 2021 mutual option. This is a guy who I think a lot of teams had circled on their free agent list. He played in 149 games last year for the Brewers, but only saw 396 at-bats. Despite that, he still hit 25 homers with 23 doubles and two triples to give him 61 RBIs, so 50 extra base hits and about 400 at bats. That's gross. A 247 batting average with a 346 on base, which is elite for that batting average. 505 slugging gave him an OPS at 851. Power left handed bat, something that Washington definitely needs some more of. You've got Juan Soto, but after that, it's pretty right handed heavy. You get Eric Thames now, who can play first base, maybe platoon with Ryan Zimmerman. I really like this pickup by the Washington Nationals. I'm surprised more people didn't go after Eric Thames. I mean, have you seen the guy? He's basically bursting through his sleeves when he's up at the plate. So strong, lots of power. One of the most underrated moves this offseason. So those are the 10 most underrated free agent signings from the 2020 MLB season. I would love to know what you guys think about it down in the comment section below. Was there someone I left off this list? Was someone that shouldn't have been on here on there? Let me know what you think down below. Remember to leave a like on the video if you guys did enjoy it, as well as subscribe to the channel if you do enjoy the content. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at GiraffeNickMark. Links in the description. Keep the conversation going. Always talking baseball over there. Otherwise, I think it's time to wrap today's video up. You guys know the drill. YouTube recommends you watch this video, as well as this is my most recent upload. So click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you so much for the amazing support. 
recently, guys. I do appreciate you, and I'll catch you all tomorrow for another video. Bye.